Hi everyone, hope this finds you all well. Uh, just another quick little video uh, continuing on from the uh, white border video that I uh, posted recently. Just wanting to show how to create a drop shadow uh, border in Photoshop as well. So it's another interesting little effect that you can create. So we're going to start with the same image that we used previously, which is a uh, drone shot. Um, uh, that I, I took uh, not too far from where I live and what we're going to do is uh, create uh, an extra layer um, so that we can uh, then drop a shadow off that top layer which is this photograph. Firstly what we're going to do is uh, add a white border to this image similar to what we did in the previous video. So if we look at canvas size, uh, if we click on that, uh, it's defaulted to inches. The canvas extension color is white, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to add a one inch border all the way around this image. Uh, it's a nice starting point and it's a nice size border. Now what we want to do is create an extra layer underneath because we need that extra layer to be able to then drop a shadow. Uh, if we go down to the very bottom of the layers tab down here, we can see um, uh, a little uh, checkbox second from the left hand side, sorry, second from the right hand side, create new layer. And you can see that that's created a new layer uh, above our background. Now what we want to actually do is, is make our background into a layer. So we double click that one uh, and hit OK. You can see that it's now layer zero. Then what we want to do is drag that top layer Actually, before we do, uh, what we want to do is, because uh, at the moment that top layer is transparent, we want to fill it with white. So all I've done is select uh, white from our foreground color. Going, uh, I've then gone up to the paint bucket tool, uh, selected that and then clicked on that and that sends the whole layer white. Back down to our layers uh, tab, we'd, we're then going to drag that layer down to below the photograph so that if we switch off that photograph we can see we've got the white layer underneath. Now, the problem we have at this stage is that the layer below is the same size as the layer above. So what we want to do is increase the size of that white canvas layer at the bottom and then we'll be able to drop our shadow from the top layer. So image canvas size obviously I've got the bottom layer selected and I'm going to add two inches on either side and we've got our layer below uh, now sitting larger than the original image that we were working with and you can see that's obviously uh, the extended part gone to transparent again with our paint bucket tool selected and our white uh, color selected we can Click on that and uh, we've now got a layer underneath that's bigger than the photograph that is pure white. Excellent. All right. So from here, because the background layer is white and the border that we applied to the image is white, as you can see there, you can't actually see it. Hence the purpose of having a drop shadow. Now on that top layer, just to the right of the image, you can see where the, the uh, cursor is for the mouse right now. If we just double click there, then we have a dialog box layer style coming up. Down the very bottom of all of those options, you can see drop shadow. If I click on that, it will select drop shadow and you can see immediately it's applied a shadow to that image. Now there's a whole bunch of different options up here of how that shadow appears. Uh, let's just go through a few but obviously you can experiment with yourself so that you get the effect that you want to get. If we look at opacity then as opacity has the same effect in other parts of Photoshop uh, the less opacity the less uh, strength in the appearance of that particular effect. Okay, if we look at distance, if we increase the distance, you can see the shadow is going further and further away from the top layer. Again, you make these adjustments based on um, how you want your image to look. Uh, the spread, if we just increase that spread a little bit, again, it seems to be um, sharpening up or, or making the edges of that shadow quite prominent um, that setting I would keep quite low uh, and then when we look at size the size acts like a diffuser um, for the actual um, shadow so if we look at say for example I'm going to increase the size and I'm going to increase the distance then 
that gives me a realistic shadow behind my image I'm just going to move that out of the way that I'm quite happy with it's also um, throwing a little bit of a shadow on the highlight sides of the uh, the frame uh, so that the overall uh, top layer is well defined from the bottom layer excellent now all you need to do is hit OK um, and that uh, will be applied. From here you could save it to keep those layers intact. Uh, if you want to have a uh, uh, come back and make further adjustments you can save it as a PSD um, which I'm going to do so you can see there it's uh, it's defaulted as uh, the file type of PSD. Um, I'm going to keep that for now. I'm just going to call it layered on the back of the image file there and hit save and we're good to go. Otherwise, if we would like to complete that image and um, uh, uh, flatten all of those layers, uh, you can either select both layers, right click and flatten image, or you can go up to the layer drop down box and there's also flatten image there as well. Hope that's been uh, helpful and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, 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 uh.